Let's take a look at some information and charts on Aave for Brave New Coin. So Aave falls under the lending and borrowing category in the mix with Maker, Comp, and a few other lesser known protocols that currently have 18 billion TVL, most of which is on version two. And how this works is you can deposit any of these various assets here on version two, and they all have various APYs, various borrowing APRs. In general, it's pretty straightforward, easy to do, move the coins in and out for your interest, basically. Now, in a bull market, you expect these rates to generally probably be higher than a bear market, but overall, it's based on supply and demand in general. And over time, all these markets will get more and more complex, but right now it's just straightforward, one-to-one. -one. You deposit a dollar in USDC, in your wallet it appears as one dollar of Aave USDC. If we look at the TVL over time for Aave, currently at an all-time high, DeFi Pulse has it at 12 billion, probably doesn't include all the versions and AMM markets Aave has to offer, but nevertheless, still continuously pushing all-time highs, which is what you want to see. Some of this is ETH price appreciation. Some of this is ETH deposits increasing as well. Uh, BTC deposits way up, DAI deposits way up. So in general, deposits across the board rising for Aave, certainly bullish. If we look at Aave versus Comp and Maker, Aave currently holds essentially a third of the deposits in lending. It holds around a little less than a third in outstanding loans and as far as market share it's right around that 30 percent mark so it's certainly in the conversation with everything else relative to competition there isn't a leader or laggard here in general compound leads as far as outstanding loans but there's no clear winner here and as long as incentives are somewhat equal there probably won't be a clear winner between all of them if we look at transaction counts for ave just as most of these Governance tokens, the transaction on-chain stuff looks pretty soft. You're not going to see general explosions in transaction counts for Aave. Most of this is buying and holding or speculative related. So in a vacuum, you might say, okay, transactions are declining. Price is rising. That doesn't really make sense. There's a bit of a bearish divergence there. But in reality, it probably doesn't matter too much. As price rises, you're going to see rises in average transaction values. Something else to mention with all this DeFi stuff, if gas remains high, DeFi is going to get crushed because it prices people out and it really sets like a minimum value to participate. Because if gas prices are 0.2 to 0.4 ETH to do some of this stuff on Aave, I haven't double checked what exactly the costs are, but I'm, I'm seeing extremely high co co gas costs across the board. So unless you have five figures, six figures in and out of Aave, then it's probably not going to be worth it for most people, the platform. If we look at uh, NVT, NVT is flat, probably in general meaningless, so long as Aave is just a governance token that doesn't really necessarily move a lot on-chain. Active addresses uh, sort of mirror transaction counts in that they are at multi-week, multi-month lows. Really haven't seen active addresses this low since early January. So I suspect as price picks up, you're going to see a rise in active addresses just based on speculation. Looking at Google Trends for Aave, it's projecting a return to all-time highs. Now Aave is a Finnish word, Finnish word for ghost. So you got to be careful when you're looking at actual words globally, but it still looks like this is an Aave protocol effect and not Finnish Aave, unless there's a lot of ghost sightings in Finland recently. <laughs> Uh, so this is bullish for price, certainly, and you typically see this go hand in hand. If price goes up, you will see a rise in uh, Google Trends. Flipping to technicals, this is the half-year MA multiplier, mainly because there isn't that much price history to look at Aave. But to me, it pretty clearly shows you buy zone, sell zone. We're currently still in a bull market. That's obvious based on trend, based on price just grinding highs. And in general, you get a series of markup phases, bullish moves, followed by consolidations, mean reversions, and then decision time. Do we go again? Yes, no. If we go again, historically, we've hit the top of this band, you could say. So 5x, the half-year MA, currently is 14.10. That's going to slowly creep up over time, just as it has since 
2020. So does Ave have a 3, 4, 5x in it again, potentially? So long as DeFi does well, I think all this stuff could do well, continue to do well. Fees need to stay down. Layer 2 needs to get adopted, that sort of thing. So a lot of bullet points to take into account there. But this does look more bullish than bearish. Certainly, it even sort of tried to retest or come back to this this MA. Didn't quite get there. But so I like I like the upside here of uh, 14 plus. Certainly within the next two months, most likely. If we look at the 15 to 200 cross on the daily, still bullish. No surprise there if we're above the 183, we're probably above the 200. Above the 50, we sort of grinded around the 50, very reminiscent of the previous retests of the 200-day moving average. Both of those also led to a 7618 plus from high to low FIB extension. Currently, that's around 2K plus. So again, there's a nice range between 1410 today, which is going to keep going up, and then a likely ceiling of around 22, 2K. Should this perform as it has since 2020? which is a big if, but it's important, I think, to take that into consideration. So that still looks incredibly bullish. Uh, Ave USD on the daily cloud just flipped bullish over the past week, and we're seeing that already start to pay off as this looks like it's probably going to retest all-time highs. So very similar signals to late November as far as the end of a bull trend, mean reversion, decision time, bullish continuation. So we are on the verge of bullish expansion, price markup, whatever, however you want to think about it. It looks like it's done consolidating and ready for more. On the BTC pair, very similar. Retested that 200-day moving average a few times, and now it's above the cloud again. You could say there was some sort of inverted head and shoulders, just continuous shoulder, head, shoulder, chopped around. Now shoulder, head, shoulder, you know, even if you don't believe in any of that stuff, Adam, Eve, you can look at and say, this is definitely not bearish, right? (laughs) We're we're above the 200. We're above the cloud. We're painting bullish reversal-esque fractals on price. So I like all-time high retest here. I like bullish continuation. I like new all-time highs, definitely. This looks like it's done uh, consolidating on the Ave ETH pair. It is below the 200, below the cloud, and it looks like it has this descending broadening wedge characteristic, which you don't see too often, but just to give you an idea of how that may play out. This is Bed Bath & Beyond. This is a stock in the U.S. markets, and it had a very similar type of uh, down move where it just ping-pongs between these diags. It actually put in a bullish div. This is on the weekly chart, but it pulled in a bullish divergence and then broke to the upside. So we're not quite there for Ave as far as the bull div is concerned. It's getting a series of increasingly lower RSIs. This is probably the lowest RSI on the chart, maybe ever. So the big test is going to be the 200-day moving average. It's going to be the key June on the daily, and it's probably at this point worth a stab to rotate into this DeFi stuff from ETH. Because you're either looking at all this stuff thinking, all right, this needs to cool off. I'm just going to sit on the sidelines for a while. Or you're thinking it's time for ETH wealth effect to rotate into other stuff and you're preparing for moves in DeFi or whatever else. I think that's the fork in the road right now. Will everything crumble on ETH's pullback, on BTC's weakness, or will we see some sort of rotation regardless of what happens with um ETH and BTC. And lastly, I'll just mention the ETH and BTC fund on Enzyme.Finance, non-custodial portfolio management tool. You can send USDC or ETH into a smart contract, and then I have the ability to take trades with those monies and no mins, no maxes. You can get in and out whenever you want. You can see the deposits and withdrawals here. You can see all the trades I make. Everything's transparent. You can see where I do it. There are fees associated with this 2 and 20, mainly to pay transaction costs on these DEXs, honestly, which is getting higher and higher every week. But you can also see my allocations. You can see if I'm long or short. If I'm short here, you're going to see IETH or IBTC. Here's that Aave USDC. So I have the ability to use Aave as well through 
enzyme to collect some of that interest or yield APY, however you want to think about it. And I also have a, we also have a DeFi portfolio uh, at Techamy. Same deal. You can see AOM performance allocations. Ave is also in this portfolio here, currently a little under 3% allocation. And this portfolio is based on the pillars of DeFi, lending and borrowing, oracles, DEXs, DEX aggregators, and miscellaneous stuff like wrappers, REN, and the like. So that's all I have for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, and happy trading.